Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. Oh, once again, lots of news, lots and lots of stuff to cover. Royal, we're working royals first and then we'll move on. For those of you who missed it, I did a live last night because Christopher Boozy had some sort of a mental breakdown and I had to address, or I felt like I should address some of the tweets that he put up because he just lost it. So without further ado, let's just get going, shall we? Let's go. I'm starting off today with Miss Seaman. She's 93 years old and she knitted a giant replica of Buckingham Palace. It's going to be uh, able to be viewed on Norwich or at Norwich until the 19th. I, I can't even imagine how you knit, much less how you knit a whole palace. Unbelievable. Now, this isn't the only thing she knitted. She also knitted the Sandringham Estate. The Queen saw it. Uh, and complimented on it, and it was actually shown in the Sandringham Estate Ballroom in 2021. It went on display there. The patience you have to have to knit this kind of stuff, I can't even imagine. Good for you. All right, moving on. Next up, we have Princess Anne, the Princess Royal. She went and visited the Five Valleys Shopping Center and officially opened the Five Valleys Medical Practice. And of course, she was all smiles doing her job, and I love the flowers. Now, while we're still talking about Anne, an article came out pointing out that she's wearing a silver brooch. Now, she's apparently worn this several times throughout the years, but it's never been identified, which is really kind of odd. Usually, you wear it once and they know where it came from. Hmm. All right, moving on. Next up, we have Edward, the Duke of Edinburgh. And I told you yesterday that he went to visit volunteers at Stonebridge and um, he saw participants boosting their careers through the National Hub and Derby. Well, of course, some more pictures came out. You knew I had to show them to you. You guys, I am so glad he is now the Duke of Edinburgh. You just don't know. And after that, uh, Edward went to a visit at Portland College, which is a specialist education and therapy college. And apparently the volunteers and staff were involved in this visit and they showed the impact that they're making on the young people's lives. Very nice. Way to go, Edward. Next up, Queen Camilla, Queen Consort Camilla, went to the Cheltenham Ladies Day for the second day of racing. I showed you that Zara and Mike were there yesterday. She looked absolutely lovely. I believe we've seen that hat before, but you know, whatever. So she showed up and uh, looked all smiles. I didn't realize they even had just a Ladies Day. Very nice. I'm loving the leather gloves too. Well, moving on, as I just said, Zara and Mike were there and they absolutely have no issue showing PDA in public, but they're so cute. I just wish though that we would have had the picture of Mike wearing the hat that he always takes after events. You know what I'm saying? I wish we could have seen it. Eh, maybe tomorrow. Moving on. Next up, we have King Charles. He went and visited members of the Sudanese community from across the United Kingdom. It is the anniversary of the, it's the 20th anniversary of the conflict in Darfur. And he was given a traditional Sudanese welcome using the marhaba, an Arabic word for welcome. Now, he was accompanied, I believe it's the lady in the brown um, burqa, I think is what you call it. He was accompanied by Amuna, I believe is her name. She was a survivor of the conflict. Um, and he and the queen consort uh, marked Holocaust Memorial Day earlier this year with her. Charles also had the opportunity to meet representatives from a group called Waging Peace. They provide support to the Sudanese individuals that are looking for asylum or refugee status and those with wider um, diaspora because they're trying to build meaningful lives in the UK. They also work to ensure that the stories of the survivors and what happened are shared around the world and not forgotten, just like the Nazi Holocaust. They make sure that, you know, you never forget. All right, moving on. 
Next up, this is just a small little story. Apparently, I did not catch the fact that Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh, was wearing the earrings to the Commonwealth service that Edward had designed for her for their wedding day. How nice. Next up, we're going to turn our attention to William, who said that his late mother, Diana, would be upset that more progress wasn't made to combat homelessness. She knew all about it. She took William and Harry to shelters. We know that William spent the night, you know, on the street, albeit he had security with him. And he just said, you know, I think she would be disappointed that we're no further um, in terms of tracking homelessness and preventing it than when she first got interested in it. Now, William spoke with people who had homelessness, and it's always been a key long-running element of his public work. And he's going to continue, he says, until he gets it under control. Go, William. Next up, we have Fergie. You know, she puts out a story. Me and Diana were arrested and thrown into a van the night before Diana's wedding on her hen night. Okay, the woman has been deceased for 25 years. I think she's trying to do what Harry's doing and appropriate Diana's memory to help her sell books because she's just written another book. I think it's horrid. I don't, I could care less what happened 40 years ago. Most people could care less. Like, stop. Now, talking about Meghan Markle, Fergie said this. That I strongly believe I have no judgment on any other person's life. And I look at how much she loves him and loves the children and gives him a love that he's never had before. Right, because she stalked him. I don't know if you guys saw Taz's video today about the cult. Watch it. Because it is a huge eye-opener, I'm telling you. All right, really quickly, um, Meghan Markle's fans, the Sugars, don't like the SNL joke uh, that they made about her the other night on SNL. And the joke was she was invited to the coronation at $19 an hour. And yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. And now I, I don't, I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't have anything to say about this. Moving on. All right, next up. Uh, apparently, you know, I told you guys that uh, Harry and Meghan didn't go to an Oscar party. They weren't invited. And they didn't go to an after party. So they put out an article that they snubbed the Oscars because they knew there'd be negative press. So they just decided not to go. Uh-huh. I completely agree with this article. They are Hollywood nobodies. Megan wants to be a Hollywood somebody, but she was a D-list actress at best in a cable show in Canada that most Americans had never heard of. Most people had no clue who she was. Yeah, they are nobodies. That's why they skipped it. I mean, it's even being brought out now that Harry and Megan are going to lose their place at the Met Gala. They're going to lose their invite. Yeah, who wants to be around them? Nobody. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, the celebrities who initially backed them have all disappeared into the background. You don't hear anything from George Clooney or Amal Clooney anymore. Remember, you don't hear anything from anybody anymore except Serena Williams. Yeah, that's it. You don't hear from anybody else. Everybody else is like, uh-uh, we don't want a part of this. Now, we know that people are making fun of them. And according to Neil Sean, Harry and Meghan have decided to do the whole if you can't beat them, join them thing. And now they want to go on like SNL or whatever and be in some skits. Uh, I don't see that happening myself, but okay. But some stuff they have no response to, like this one. And thank you to Evans Einstein for this. They use the F-bomb. They called them, you know, the F-word stupid. Yeah. On television. Yeah. Next up, yes, it's coming out that um, Harry and Meghan are being asked to prove that uh, Diana's sisters were there for the uh, baptism. Yeah, nothing yet. And stories like this come out. Harry said, my mother gave me a message after death. Well, I had heard and I had reported previously that Meghan apparently held a seance and supposedly channeled uh, Diana. <coughs> um, yeah. Interesting. All right, let's move on. Now, I saw this on Twitter. It caught my attention. People are also questioning why, if he really thought he had such a bad childhood and he was stuck in a system and it was just so bad, 
why in the world would he want to put his children into that? Because that's what he did. Interesting. Hmm. All right, moving on. All right, here's one of the bigger stories we're going to cover today. A YouTuber has basically said that Harry and Meghan's show is a festival of you-know-what. And because apparently in the series, they imply that she was part of a trolling campaign of hate propaganda meant to take down the couple. Her name is Shadon Lester. She has almost 350,000 subscribers. And she, well, you know what she branded the documentary. This woman said, you know what? I've never made any shred of content from an account other than my own. I've never encouraged anyone to make content targeting Harry and Meghan. If I did, show me. How did I influence millions to harass them? There's not one shred of evidence. And as per usual, nothing these two say makes any, any sense. And any report in this documentary is pure pathetic fiction, not even clever enough for a Suits rerun. She said, Megan and Harry are just very, very simply unlikable. No one needs to be part of a conspiracy to see that. They suck. <laughs> this is just what she said. And she said, Megan can play the race card all she wants. Plenty of black people are over her shtick too, because her idea of solving racism is hogging it all for herself, whereas some people really have hardship. Amen. All right, next up, they're saying, again, with the, with the is she going, is she not going, they're saying Meghan Markle is not going to go and she doesn't want to face the music. She doesn't want to be caught in the crossfire. She doesn't want to be booed. She, she knows that it's, you know, either way they go, they're in trouble. If they don't go, then they look petty and pathetic because after all, the king invited them as his much loved son. But if they do go, they're going to seem like hypocrites because they've been slamming the royal family at absolutely every turn. It'll be interesting to see which, you know, which way they go. So what do you guys think? Do you think she'll show up? Do you think she has the guts to show up or do you think she won't? What do you think? All right, you guys, next up, we've heard that Megan wants to relaunch the TIG. Now, the idea behind it is that it's going to tell people how they should live, you know, a lifestyle guru, and it's going to rival Goop, which is the lifestyle blog that's been put up by Gwyneth Paltrow, which makes a lot of money. So I guess that's what she's hoping to do. Plus, it's the only thing she can control. You know what I mean? Problem is nobody wants her as a lifestyle guru. All right, now we're going to get into the bigger story for tonight. In 2019, Meghan Markle got letters for Black History Month from some students, and she responded to them. Then in 2020, after Harry and Meghan had come to the United States, Meghan goes, they have a Black History Month in the UK? She didn't even remember the letters she got from the students that she responded to with personal notes. Now, by 2021, she surprised uh -huh, a virtual poetry class for, La for Black History Month. And she showed up and said, oh, I love this poem. It's my favorite. Yeah, I bet she couldn't even tell you today what it was. Now, she also did a passionate statement to mark Black History Month. She did an op-ed, okay? In other words, she's making sure that you know that she's black and she celebrates black history with you. That's how she feels about it, okay? And the core message in Harry and Meghan's Oprah interview was that the royal family was racist. Don't forget she said there were concerns and conversations about Archie's skin tone. Don't forget she said he wasn't getting the title of prince like the other grandchildren because he's a child of color. Don't forget she said her child wasn't going to get security because he's a child of color. They claimed that the UK press was racist against her. Harry talked about how race was going to affect their marriage. So you can imagine how his supporters felt when he turned around and said, we never said that the royal family was racist. It was the UK media who said that, not us. Of course, we all knew that that was absolutely incorrect. People were really upset. 
And they were like, you know, if it was true that you were misunderstood and that you weren't calling the royal family racist, then why in the world didn't you come forward and correct that narrative for two years? And the reason for that is because they did say exactly what they meant. Yes, they were calling the royal family racist. So how does this all tie in together? Well, it's very simple. Notice that from 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, Megan has appropriated blackness and she's taken it as a victim stance. I'm black, I'm, they're going against me because I'm black. But imagine 2023 this year, she said nothing about Black History Month. They didn't put anything on the Archer Wells site. She didn't put out any statements. And you know why that is? Because she's gotten everything from the black community that she can get, and now she's moving on. All right, you guys, I really want your thought processes. Do you think that Megan's gonna show up at this coronation? Do you think she would pass up the chance to do this, do you? Do you think she'd pass it up? Because I just don't, that's just my opinion. All right, so leave your comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you've already hit the button, double check and make sure that you are still subscribed. Don't forget to go up and get the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, my Patreon, the mailing address in case there's something you want to mail to me. And uh, for those of you who've donated through my coffee fund and through the thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.